our next topic is correlation. Correlation simply means to match up, to com have two things equal each other. Here we can see that people have correlated their outfits. They are matching. Go, ooh, that's kind of scary. We can see here that people have correlated. They've matched up from one to another. There's, ah, there's correlation. And here in science, we're going to use the, the term correlation to match up rocks from one area to another. Correlation means to match up the rocks. So if I find some rock layers in one area, can I match those with rock layers in the other areas? If I find some natural resources in some rocks, can I go elsewhere and find out where those natural resources might also be? And if I can correlate or match up the rocks, that helps me and also helps me with uh, dating. And if I know the age of some rocks, uh, I can then correlate and know the age of some other rocks as well. This is Dr. Scatterday, my professor from SUNY Geneseo, who asked us one day, he says, all right, everyone in the class, he says, we're going to go on a field trip, and he took us to the Rochester Gorge, and our job in Rochester was to hike down the gorge and look at all the different rock layers and identify the rock layers themselves. You can see over on the left, there's my drawing from the project. We also identify certain minerals and fossils that we found inside the rock and different rock types and how thick the layers were. He then had us do this again over in Niagara. The same exact thing. And again, we looked at the fossils in the rocks, the types of rock, how thick the rock layers were. And we drew that up to try and match. And then we also did the same with a third. And our job was to match or to correlate. And our job was to match or to correlate those rock layers and try and figure out which layers matched which other layers. And you can see there were some layers that we found in one area that matched well with others and some that we found in another area that didn't match. Uh, so we had to figure out what was going on underneath. This idea of correlation is used quite often in the sciences. Let's, let's do a, a simpler one here. You guys have rock layer H on the right hand side of your notes. Which rock layer do you think it correlates or matches over on the left hand side? Well, we see that H is a limestone. It has that classic limestone pattern. So I would not try and match up layer H with layer E, which is a gypsum pattern. But I do have a limestone here at D, as well as a limestone here at A. So it most likely matches up with one of those. Which one does it, does it match up with, or does it most likely match up with? Well, considering that above layer H, there's layer I, which is a shale. Above layer A is layer B, which is a shale. Above layer D is layer E, which is a gypsum. I would much rather match up the shells and the limestones together. So I think it's more likely that the layers match up like this. And then from there, we have a sandstone that seems to match up well with that sandstone. We're not really sure what goes on there, but we could probably then guess that here this is the surface of the earth. And then this layer here too would match something like that. So we just did some, some correlation. We correlated some layers. We're going to get a helping hand sometime to correlate these layers. And then one of the things that helps us a lot is volcanic ash. As you can imagine, if this volcano continues to erupt, not a lot of lava, but a tremendous amount of volcanic ash is being put into the atmosphere. You can see how the wind is now moving that volcanic ash to very far places. It's not just going to land around the volcano. It's actually going to move around geographically to a very large area. That ash eventually is going to fall to the ground. It's going to land in some lakes and rivers and even into the ocean. And it's going to form a layer of volcanic ash that we can then use to help us match up layers. Here we see a layer of volcanic ash in Montana and some 
rock layers in Montana, if we find that same volcanic ash in other layers, we can correlate those layers. Volcanic ash is an excellent time marker. Now take a look at the reason why volcanic ash is, ash is an excellent time marker. Because it's deposited over a large area. That's a very important thing, a very large area. It's not just going to cover the surrounding area around the volcano, but it's going to spread into many other locations. And this happens ge geologically very quickly. Quickly. So let's say the volcano erupts, the ashes uh, put up into the atmosphere and then deposits over the course of even a year. That's super fast. I can definitely now help if I find that ash layer in one place and find it in another place, I could correlate or match those layers up. So to help us correlate, we looked at the different types of rocks. We looked at, looked at the, the sequence of rocks. Volcanic ash is really going to help us match up layers as well. But the number one thing that we're going to use to help us correlate or match up rock layers are fossils. These different fossils in the, in the rock layers, if we find them in one area and we find them in another area, are going to help us match up. If it's a good fossil to use to correlate, then we call that an index fossil. So there are some fossils that are not very helpful in matching up rock layers. If it is helpful, we give it a name. We say this is an index fossil. And notice that the reason a fossil is an index fossil, it's a good time marker, is the same or very similar reasons for why volcanic ash was a good time marker. It happens for a very short time over a very large area. Let's try and correlate these three locations. So I've got uh, some rock outcrops in three separate locations that are very far away from each other. And let's take a look at the fossils that we have inside and determine whether they're good index fossils or not. Let's start off by looking at the the fish, which is shown by this symbol right here. So there's the fish right there. Did it exist for a short time? No. I've got fish in this old rock here. I've got fish in this young rock up high. And all in between, this fish existed for a very long time, from the old all the way to the young rocks. So the fish... Uh, not very good for that. Is the fish in lots of layers, meaning is it in lots of different areas? Is it geographically widespread? Well, no, I only find the fish in this one location. That's the only location the fish is found. There's no fish in this location. There's no fish over here in this location. So from what we've seen, the fish is not a very good index fossil. Let's take a look at the next, and that is this shell right here, this brachiopod, is it a good index fossil? Now remember the first thing to make a good index fossil is it existed for a sh uh, short time and we also want it to exist in many different areas. Well, uh, we find it in many different areas. I find that shell pattern in that location. I find the shell pattern here in this location and I also find the shell pattern over here in this location. So yes, it's found in a large geographic area. That's good. But just like the fish, it is found in some old rock. And it's also found in some young rock as well. So un unfortunately, the shell does a good job of being in many different areas, many different locations. But it does a poor job of existing for a very short time. Let's take a look at our next fossil. And that is the trilobite, which is shown by the little triangle. Oh, now we've got a fossil that's only in one layer, meaning it existed for a very short time. That's what we need this, the index fossil to be. We need it to exist for a very short time. Notice that it's only found in that layer. We don't find it in the other layers. All right, let's go to our second location over here. And, hmm, that fossil's not there. And the third location, the fossil trilobite, is not found anywhere over there. Well, it does a good job of being in a very short time span, but does not do a good job of being geographically widespread. It, although it's only in this layer, how do I know which layer it matches up to over there if there's no trilobites in that layer? So the trilobite is not a good index fossil. Let's take a look at our fourth one, and that's the starfish. Uh, do we find the starfish in all three layers? Yes, we, we see we find the starfish here. 
we find the starfish here in the second layer, and we find it in the third layer. And did the starfish exist for a short period of time? Yes, the starfish is only found in that layer. It is only found in that layer, and it is only found in that layer. So here, the starfish helps us correlate. The starfish fills all the requirements of being an index fossil. We can now correlate or match up the rocks. Remember, see what the... the purpose of an index fossil is to help us correlate, to help us match up. I know which rock layers now match up with the other rock layers because I've looked at the index fossils. Why don't you give it a shot? So here we've got four outcrops, different fossils shown. Which index fossil, do you think it's fossils A, B, C, or D, which, which, which fossil is the best index fossil? Let's take a look at each one. Uh, a is this goofy looking critter right here. So I, I see it there, there, there. Where else is A? Here's A in here. So I noticed that A is in many different locations. It's in all of them. So that's a good thing. I want it to be geographically widespread. But it's not really limited in time. I, I see it's in two layers. It's in only in one layer here in outcrop two. But it's in two layers in the others. So uh, that's okay, but it's not, uh, the, not the best. We're looking for something a little bit better than A. Let's go and take a look at B. Where else do I find B? I can find B here in this layer, this layer. So again, I find the, that B is in a number of different layers. That's great. It's geographically, wide, geographically widespread. Is it also existing for a short period of time? Yes, it is only found in one layer in each of the four outcrops. So B looks like an excellent time marker, therefore making it an index fossil. Let's take a look at the others. So let's take a look at C now. C is only found in one location, just an outcrop number four. We know we want it to be geographically widespread. It doesn't help us if it's found in just one spot. It's got to be found in all of them. So we don't like that one. And then finally, if we take a look at D, we find D, again, in many different uh, locations, which is great. It's found in outcrops 1, 2, 3, and 4. But here in outcrop 2, I find it in both the old rock as well as the young rock. I'm not sure where it matches up to. So that leaves us with uh, the correct answer is B is our best index fossil. Here in New York State, we have a number of index fossils. These can be found on the bottom of pages 8 and 9 in your reference tables. We'll be doing more on the top part of that page. But here is a list of a number of index fossils that are common in New York State. So correlation means to match up rocks. We have two things that help us match up the rocks besides just looking at the rock type and the rock sequence we could also use volcanic ash the best way to match up the rocks though is to use the index fossils